Hello, hello, welcome. Today, I want to do a reading on Auntie Bev. She is Judge Beverly Canoni or something from the Boston case from the great, great. Oh, we've got some jumpers in. I'm going to say we might need to grab Ashley's cards before we know it. So I wanted to do a reading on Judge Beverly and there's tons of rumors going around that the McAlberts, the white trash, incestuous, disgusting family that have been there forever called her Auntie Beth. There were rumors that she was in cahoots with the McAlberts. The Alberts is, are the family that John O'Keefe's body was found on his lawn and the McCabe's. They're all married, literally. I don't, I think she's sisters with them. So I was, I want to ask, and then I want to ask about the jury too, but first I want to ask about Auntie Bev and what exactly is going on there. Is she really impartial? And the reason I'm asking that is because the defense, the world's best defense attorney I've ever seen in my entire life by far, Alan Jackson, if he wasn't married, but he is, and he has children, he, they asked her and his partner, can't remember his name. He's just as awesome. There, you'd make a great team. But they asked her to recuse, recuse herself, and she didn't. She said there were no conflicts of interest, and everything was just fine. Nothing to see here, folks. Her rulings, I thought, were annoyingly pro-prosecution, even though the prosecutor, prosecutorial misconduct is probably coming. And I am not saying that as, I'm just saying that if I was a juror, he got caught lying on the stand. He wasn't even on the stand. In his opening statement, he straight up lied. So that might be coming. But she, there's so many funny parodies about it. You should definitely check it out. So I want to, please hold. I didn't just turn the light on. There we go. I want to do a reading on Judge Bev. And we already have a sword here. So the swords, that's a little cheat sheet. I've taken pictures and printed it up for you guys. Oh, I should probably make one for True Crime. I have one. I just don't have a printer. So let's just talk about what we got already right off the rip is an ace of swords. To me, that can be a surgery or a contract. And I want to know what's going on with the McAlberts, McCabe's, the Alberts, and Judge Bev. I think Colin, he's just a punk. I don't know. Maybe he didn't get loved enough or something. There's definitely something wrong. And he called, I think it was him that called her Auntie Bev. Like, Turtle Boy, whether you like him or not, that's not what this is about. But someone text him, Auntie Bev's going to bury you. So let's see what's going on with Auntie Bev. Hold on, that cut weird. All right, so that cut weird. And, oh, great. This is a great start, Auntie. Oh, boy. So the first card, these cards jumped. I haven't even, I didn't even check yet what they are. Temperance was the, under, the emperor. Need I say more? Judge Bev. No. <laughs> So we have the Ace of Swords, the Queen of Wands, and these cards jumped. If you're in the bleachers, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. I don't read this deck in reverse, and I say that every time, but if this is your first rodeo, you'll know. And I also don't have a set number. I don't say, oh, I always read 10 or 6. I just do it intuitively. And these four jumped out. So what I'm looking at, oh boy, Auntie Bev is, oh boy. Perhaps I should have checked her birthday because I didn't even like, oh my. Oh, John has gotten this card before too. Oh boy. So we also have the Hierophant. That's the light and the dark side. We also have Temperance because these cards don't really like to be re read in reverse. To me, in True Crime Tarot, if I got Temperance in reverse, that means the ultimate dark side. Like the darkness that cannot survive with light, but it's also the, a specific entity that shall go unnamed. I was taught that to name it is to summon it. So we don't summon that kind of darkness. And that is not the devil. I would love to see the devil right now. He's not out. He's not here. So we have ultimate darkness. We have the dark side, literally, and we have the light side surrounding. Oh my gosh, each on, both on each side. The way these are. So we have the um, temperance, the ultimate evil. He's been called the prince of this world, the king of this world. We all know who I'm talking about. We have the Hierophant. That has always represented the light side. And we have the Emperor, who has also always represented the dark side. So we have light, the ultimate evil, and the dark side. Strong start, Bevy. Auntie Bev. I love the parody accounts. It makes it manageable. 
So then we have the Ace of Swords. Ace is a new beginning. This could also be like a surgery. I saw it as a contract. I wonder if there's money lying on, riding on this because we have a few pentacles coming. Oh, we give. This is the Queen of Wands. I don't know when her birthday is. I should have probably checked. I guess it doesn't really matter. She has a couple. She has three queens on here. We have the Queen of Pentacles. Hold on. Let me explain this. So this is a new beginning. Could be a contract. We have a Queen of Wands, a Queen of Swords and a queen of pentacles. So when you have anything like this, when you have three of them, figure out which one's missing. So we have the wand, or wands, swords, pentacles, so we're missing the cups, it's your emotions. Well, Auntie Bev, there is a federal investigation into the investigation, which I am waiting with bated breath to hear about the Idaho 4 one, because we have smoke and mirrors. They submitted this, speaking of prosecu prosecutory misconduct, he submitted an inverted video. And the I don't know if the, I'm sure that the defense watches LawTube and the millions of people that are analyzing it and watching it. It took like three seconds for the internet to figure out it was backwards. And that was smoke and mirrors. And as a prosecutor, that's, you know, my opinion is that he straight up lied. So and here's our smoke and mirrors. So why don't we, what, who's this? This is the star. Put a star up. And we also have a dead little boy. This has represented Ethan in the past. John, I did a reading on him, I think, last week. And he showed us this, too. Oh, so maybe we have John here. That would make this way more fun. All these women he has in his life are not so. So we, and he also got this one. This is formerly known as the Hot Cowboy. His energy has shown up at the Delphi case, the Idaho 4 case. The, what's that little girl's name? Kylie Rodney. He's attached to an entity itself which is uh, the Christchurch. I have no idea. That's just the energy that we're picking up. And so this has represented Ethan in the past and the Idaho 4 case. Well, I don't know if I'd really want that. We have a King of Wands. So we have a couple here. We have a King and a Queen of Wands. What does Auntie Bev's husband do? This could be the McAlberts, like the McCabe's, Jen McCabe and Matt McCabe, or it could be Alberts. Could be her and her husband. I know, or I haven't read the actual court documents, but there was a rumor on YouTube or on Twitter, and I refuse to call it X, that Noni's Auntie Bev's, somebody got an Albert out of trouble one time, or there was something convoluted. I wonder what her husband does. This is poverty to me. This is homeless. Fives are always chaos. You've outgrown your comfort. So say it's like, well, four pillars, four corners to a house and you have a fifth, you can't build a house with five corners. It's a growth. It's chaotic. This looks to me helpless or hopeless. They're homeless in the middle of the winter. Well, we're going to, I don't even know. We're going to use some of Ashley's cards. And Ashley doesn't sponsor me. I just like her. And I really like her cards too. I, what we're seeing right now is that Aunt, oh, Auntie Bev. So this is how cute it is. It comes in a hand stamped little bag. I love it. And there are tons of them. I think... I don't know. I can only tell you what I think. And what I think is that the feds have come in, and this is very public, they released 3,000 documents to the defense, pretty much told the DA, don't prosecute this. This is not, they don't even have the evidence. It is it is a bogus case. And Michael Proctor just got rehomed. That's what they're calling him. I saw something like that's what Catholic priests did. I don't know if it has anything to do with the union. I don't know. But what I can tell you right now is if Auntie Bev's sleeping well at night, they might be investigating her too. That's what I'm, I mean, very rarely. Actually, I don't think we've ever seen the Emperor and the Hierophant in one reading. I'm sure we did. If someone's watched it and can remember, but to have El Diablo and this is like the prince of this world in between them. And she has a contract. There's a marriage. We have smoke and mirrors. We have people are out in the cold. And we have the little dead boy that John and Ethan have shown us. I'm treading very lightly because I, these people are unhinged. And I, it is like, I think it's disgusting. I just, I feel about this. It's trashy to me. But I don't want to get it on their radars. All, I, all we do is read energy here. Oh, thank you for coming. My name is Kate. No facts here. Please do your own research. I'm just a chick with. A deck of cards and if auntie bev well these cards just jumped regret think a riot they're literally if they found her guilty yes 
there's also room we're gonna do the I want to do the jury next too. There's rumors that the jury was tainted, that Brian McAlbert sat in the courtroom and looked like a complete psycho. And I was at home. And he, I don't know if it was witness tampering or intimidation, but it was crazy. And people would have definitely rioted. And there's an underground tunnel. Oh, no. What does that mean? Oh, we got the underground tunnel in the Moscow case, too. I don't know if I pu- published it. It might be when in the receipts video, but I have a map from 1970s of the steam tunnels underneath Moscow. Oh, no. I really, I would, I did not, I don't really want, well, Auntie Bev, if she's sleeping well, she enjoy it because things aren't looking good for her. I feel like she's, I think she's in the, on the tar- she's, I would say that the government is looking at her. Oh, boy. Oh, we just got some of these cards. Flight and air travel. I'm sure she's like, I think she goes to the vineyard every summer. Or they have a house at the Cape or something. There's a hidden key missing. Oh boy, this is a little bit, I'm getting goosebumps. Oh boy, we have someone trying to run away and escape. That could be everyone whose hands are inadvertently involved in this cover-up. And there's an accomplice here. Oh man, oh boy. Auntie Bev. I don't even know what to say. Auntie Bev. Get your affairs in order. Let's just put it that way. I think she might be the target. It might have started with the prosecutory, the prosecutor's office, and she was supposed to only do civil cases. I mean, just can pretend you're sitting with me. And I just did this reading, just a normal reading. If I did this as a normal reading and you were just paying me to do this, I would, if you aren't on the radar for the feds, I don't know if you would know it. I think I don't know how that works. What I do know about the feds, well, they have a 98% success rate prosecution. They also have the money and the patience to take their time. They do very thoroughly investigations. And if you were sitting in front of me right now, I would actually not want to know anything that's going on, but I would ask you if your affairs were in order and I, wills and stuff. Not that you're going to, you're on the radar. That's what I'm just going to say. If the feds haven't told you yet, I don't know how they even tell you that you're on the radar. But I do know, or the, pros- the defense explained that the prosecutor's office already has their phone tapped, and you were not very unbiased in that trial, and they are definitely on to you. And if your books aren't clean, I don't know if you can go back and fix them. They probably already have it all. By the time the feds close in, from the Adelsons, I learned this, you're exhausted and you're over it, so you might know that they're on to you, and you're feeling some regret, but look at this regret card. This guy's in prison. That's what I'm getting is like, I would go ahead and deed my house to my children and I would get everything out of my own name because I don't know what your husband does. I don't know if his hands are clean or if they're investigating him too. And that's why we have a couple here. But your world's about to change. I didn't even get the power card because they're going back. I don't know how long you've been in office. There's 30 years of questionable decisions that are under you. So... Bev, that was not a good day for you, man. You gave in to temptation, might have sold something, and the Hierophant's here to clean it up. They're going to clean up the mess. Oh, boy. Well, it sucks to be Auntie Bev today. Well, I will love you and leave you with that then. I want to do a reading really quickly. I might grab a shirt. I'm freezing. Of I want to check in with the jury and see if someone was bought off. I don't really have anything nice to say for Aunt Bev. You made decisions that, the only, I guess if we had gotten the Two of Swords, that's a rock and a hard place. You made horrible decisions, but they, they know. And they, this might be you out in the cold. <laughs> You're screwed. So, I don't think you can go back and clean it up. I think they already know. Yikes. There's jewelry, a jewelry can, if that's not in your will yet, I'd put that in the will. Because if this is your husband, if he's in law too, or in anything that the feds could be investigating, I would get my affairs in order and I would do it quickly. The feds don't rush. I don't know how you can go back. I guess once you're this corrupt, I don't know. I'm just getting that you made a lot of horrible decisions and the prince of this world is not known as the savior that way. I mean, he is for some people perhaps, but your rodeo is coming to an abrupt halt. And perhaps John is here to help. Oh, actually, here's our missing key. Maybe John's here to help unlock the door. Oh, boy. Well, wish I had some better news for you, Auntie Bev, but 
find a parody or something to put in here to lighten that mood because that was intense. But anyway, I'll love you and leave you. Thank you guys so much for coming. Auntie Bev made a lifetime of horrible decisions and the piper always comes to collect. When you make deals with the devil, that's part of it. It's energy exchange. You give him a little something, a little bit more. It's like an addiction. It never starts underneath the bridge. But uh, I might go grab another shirt. And then I want to read on the jury. Everyone's having a better day than her. We should also look at the prosecutor. I think he's under investigation. It's an open, I, it's public knowledge that he's under investigation. And they still take a trial. So, well, that was fun.